Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's a revisit of the week three eBay repair challenge where I had the faulty power supply for the PlayStation 4. Now, yes, I've got the PlayStation 4 up and running. In fact, it's sold now, so I won't actually be able to test this in a PlayStation 4. But reading all the comments and also my curiosity, I really did want to find out what was wrong with this faulty power supply here. So I don't know if you remember, but basically I had to change over this MOSFET here and also the fuse was blown, but still it didn't work. And uh, at the time, I thought the only thing that was wrong with it was a little diode down here, because if I put my meter on continuity, there was a short across, I think it was this diode, yeah. So I thought it was that, but I wasn't too sure. I thought it might be the chip controlling that, that had shorted. I didn't really know. So uh, quite a few people said, that they would like to know what was wrong with it. And more importantly, I had loads of messages about suggestions on what it could be. And one word kept coming up over and over again. And that was check the bridge rectifier. Now, if you're into electronics, you probably know what that is. But for me, I didn't have a clue what that was. So I messaged Chris from Gadget UK and I asked him, you know, what is, because he also mentioned the bridge rectifier might have shorted. So uh, I asked him what it was. And basically he sent me a picture of it and he circled this component here. So this component here is the bridge rectifier. And I believe, according to Chris, that it converts the 240 volts AC, so this is the AC coming in here, to, I think he said it was 340 volts DC or something. Let me just check that. Yeah, 240 volts DC. He said you can work it out by times in the AC by 1.414, something like that. Don't quote me on that. So, uh, yeah. And other people also said that it was strange how I had shorts between the MOSFET, which is on the DC, and for example, the AC coming in. So have a look at this now. I've got my meter set to continuity. Now this fuse here is blown because uh, the power supply, when I plug it in, blows the fuse. But check this out. If I go between this side of the fuse and for example here, can you see it's shorting on the MOSFET? Let me just zoom in a little bit more. But yet, if I go on the working power supply, so I actually bought myself another power supply for £22.50. Now this is complete madness because I've got a working power supply, so why would I take components off here to put onto here if I've already got a working one? Purely educational. No other reason whatsoever. These are not ever gonna be going in. Well, they might be going in a PS4 many years down the line, but I haven't got a PS4 to fit them in. I just wanted to know what actually failed on this one here because the, uh, the buyer said that there was a power cut or there was a lightning strike or something in the area and then the PlayStation 4 stopped working. So obviously there's been some sort of electrical surge down the line. So what has it blown? We knew definitely it blew the MOSFET because it had a big crack on it and we knew the fuse was blown. But when I changed these two, there's still other things wrong. But look at this. So like I said a minute ago, from there to here, shorting. But now look on the good one, from there to here, not shorting, yeah? And if I go between the neutral and here, can you see it's not doing anything? But yet the neutral is going to here. So basically, it's like the AC is going too far into the board. And that's the job of the bridge rectifier. Now check this out. If I spin it over here, the bridge rectifier has got two uh, lots of contacts, so two lots of positive and negative on the AC and two lots of positive and negative on the DC. And watch this, if I go between here and here, can you see it's short? Not here, but these two short. So it's like the DC and the AC are shorting together, but yet they're not doing it on this one here. So initially it looks like maybe that the bridge rectifier has shorted out. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna unsolder this bridge rectifier and then see what it tests when it's out of circuit, because maybe something else is making this short. It might not be the component itself. So let's take it out and see if the pads are shorting, and then we can actually test the bridge rectifier itself and see if that's shorting. And also then, when we take it out, we can see if other things are shorting. So for example, remember that diode here? Can you see this is short in here? The same diode is not short in here. Yeah. So once we take that out, we can do a few other things. 
Now, how am I gonna test this? Well, there is a way, I've never done it myself, but there is a way that you can short out the two pins on the five volt connector here, and then it's supposed to allow 12 volts through to here. So basically, when you have this working, this five volt goes through the PlayStation 4 motherboard to the on and off switch, and when you turn it on, it recognizes it here, and then turns on the 12 volts through here, which actually powers up the PlayStation 4. So maybe, if it's all testing all right, maybe I can put 240 volts into here, put it back in its container, to make it a bit safe and then see if we can short out the five volts with the, the sensor line whichever one that is I need to work it out and then see if we get 12 volts here in which case then we would have proved what the fault was now just to show you all those bridge rectifier comments I'm just going to quickly try to do a bit of editing now and show you all the messages I got about it Okay, so I'm just waiting for my soldering iron to heat up. Now, if you did watch that video, you will remember that I got a nasty shock of these capacitors here. So I have tested these capacitors on both of them and they're both empty at the moment. Now, when it comes to dissipating the energy from the capacitors, a lot of people say just to short it with a screwdriver. The problem with that is it can cause damage to the capacitor. Also, using the light that I did in the last video can also cause damage because you're releasing all that energy so quick. So basically, what I've been told to do is wire up some resistors with some insulated leads, which I have done here, and then I can attach them onto here. So for example, I've got little crocodile clips here, and I can just attach them on to here and here, and then what will happen is that will slowly drain away the energy that's in the capacitor because I presume it's converting it to heat coming out of the resistor. So what I've got in here is, it, it's amazing because I've had different comments about this on how to make these and it really varies on what people say. So some people say like a one mega ohm resistor, other people say no because that will take about 12 minutes to discharge a capacitor. You need to use something that's under 100 kilo ohms. Other people say no, it needs to be over 100 kilo ohms. So it's a little bit all over the place. So I ordered up two one mega ohm resistors and uh, I've actually wired them up in parallel and then I think they were only two watts each which isn't actually very high so then what I did is I had a huge massive resistor that I got off a, a fan an extractor fan in fact it was the one that I fixed for my brother's house that after reading all the comments everybody said it was actually a dangerous board the way it was designed my brother no longer wanted it in his house so I just used a uh, resistor off that and that was a huge resistor I think that was used to get the 240 volts down to 12 volts or whatever the actual motor took so I wired that up as well and and now if I put my leads across here, it actually ends up being this. So I haven't really had a chance to use it. I used it on this because there was 12 volts in these capacitors and it drained it down straight away, but I haven't had a, a chance to use it properly yet. But as you can see, if I go across there now, uh, by wiring up three resistors in parallel, it's coming up as 21 kilo ohms. I'm gonna run with that and see what happens. If it's uh, no good, if it's, take, if it's going too quick or too, it's not gonna be too slow, but if it's too quick, I can always then take that big one out and just go with the two one mega ohm ones because that should bring it down a bit, shouldn't it? To, would it be 500 kilo ohms? I don't know, I presume it is. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I'm, gradually learning a little bit bit by bit the only problem with stuff like this is the more you know the more you realize how little you know but I'm hoping now that I will have more respect around these capacitors and I won't get a shock again right okay so I've labeled up the 40 board here so I know which one is 40 so let's take out this bridge rectifier and let's see what's going to happen with it right my soldering iron's struggling with this so I'm going to add some leaded solder to it There we go, it's better. Right, let me get some uh, pliers, that's still 
in there very solid at the moment. I should want to come out because they're all, oh here we go, it's coming out, it's just this end one. There we go, lovely. Now I didn't actually make a note of which way that went in, but I can just luckily I can copy this one. I'm, I'm hoping they're going to be exactly the, hoping they're going to be exactly the same. But that was a bit silly. I should have made a note of which way that actually went in. Well, what I'm hoping to see is that this one here is faulty. So now let's get multimeter. And remember, it was the two outer ones that were shorting, and they're still shorting now. Right. So basically, that says to me that the bridge rectifier is definitely faulty. Now let me zoom right in just to show you the markings on there. I'm hoping that it's a common component that you will be able to buy. So it looks like, uh, one second, looks like there's a bit of, can't read that last one, but it says GBL408. I'm not sure, could be an A, I don't know. But by typing that in, GBL408, and then putting bridge rectifier, Maybe there's only one, even though I can't read the last one. If not, I might be able to read the one off this here. Let's see if I can see what's written on here. <sighs> okay, this looks slightly different. This says LTGBL408. Yes, that's slightly different. Oh, it's got a plus and a minus. So the plus goes to the plus. Oh, here we go. And it's got, these are molded and ever so slightly different. But if you have a look here, can you see that that's... Uh, Yes, so oh, okay, that's plus, that's AC, isn't it? That's the symbol for AC. So negative DC plus DC and then AC in, AC in. Now I could be completely wrong here, but AC does AC work both ways around, doesn't it? Like an AC motor, it doesn't matter, there's no polarity. So maybe it doesn't actually matter which way the AC goes into it. Again, I don't know. Right, uh, so now let's measure this board here and let's see now if we've still got those shorts between, do you remember the fuse and this one here? So the fuse I've got to go this side, that's coming up here, so it's not coming up there anymore, but I suppose it's completely broken here now, so I'm probably not going to get anything this side of the board and nothing there. Let's see what's happening with this diode now because maybe there's numerous things. Yeah, so that diode is still short and even though that bridge rectifier is out. So that says to me it's not just the bridge rectifier at fault. So shall we now take out the diode and see, because no point in me putting in the bridge rectifier because something else is just gonna blow, isn't it? I might end up blowing other things. So this definitely shouldn't still be shorting. So shall we pop this particular diode out and see if the pads are shorting and if they are we know then it might well be the chip here that's controlling it or it might be the diode itself that has uh, blown so let me see if I can just unsolder unsolder that well I thought I'd be able to just take that out using the soldering iron but uh, I can't so I'm gonna have to use the hot air on that let me get some flux. I'm only going to put a tiny bit on because I don't think it's going to take much heat to get rid of this. Right, I'm at 400. I've got my airflow at 5 out of 8. Just pop the board there. The board just bubbled up. Wow, look at it. Can you see it bubbled up there, delaminated. Wow, I've never had that happen before. So I suppose what I should have done is I should have heated up a wider area first. I wonder, hopefully I might get away with that because this isn't going to be a multi-layer board, is it? It's just going to be this side and the other side. 
Anyway, this is just purely for education anyway, just to see what does blow. Now it's going again. Why is this uh, component not coming off? Right, let's try some more flux. I thought that would be off by now. Maybe because it's so burnt, it's kind of burnt in like that Xbox One controller I had ages ago. Doesn't look very burnt though. I'm going to end up ruining these traces here. Wow, what is going on? There we go. Okay, so now that is completely and utterly burnt. And is that because, is that the failure point then? Or did I muck that up now? Look. Can you see there? It's uh, that's blackened, isn't it? Tell you what, let's give this a good clean up. Actually, before I clean it, let's just measure this diode, see if we've got a short both ways again. I'm not on diode test, I'm just on continuity. No, we haven't. I'm just going to put it on diode test. Let's zoom out more. Alright, so this is diode test now. Right, 0.7 that way round. and open that way around. That says to me that that diode is actually okay. So, uh, oh, I'm confused now. Of course, serious damage there. Let's see if I can just test for a short on the pads. Let me zoom right in again. Right, so the pads themselves are shorting. Right, why? Uh, so that that's short in there. Did I did I cause all that damage there just from heating it up? Then I mean, it looks like it's blackened under the diode. So how would I have burnt under the diode? I don't know now. I really don't know. Anyway, the short's still here, so we've got other stuff to go on now, haven't we? So I wonder now. I, mean, I can't really see where everything goes to. I wonder should I pop off this chip here and then see if the short goes. That might be a good idea. Right, so I'm just going to take this off now. I'm not going to worry about all the damage I've caused here for the moment. Let's just see what is actually causing this fault. Right, I'm just going to heat up a slight bigger area of the board to begin with. So uh, the heat isn't concentrated just in the one area. bubbling up there in that same spot. Right, okay, so that came off cleanly, but again, it made the popping noise. Up here again. So the board really has delaminated up here. Good news is there's not a huge amount of traces there, so you could probably clean it with IP8, see where all the traces go, and then work out what's what. Right, okay, so now let's check for shorts on here again. Ah, still shorting. So it's not that chip, is it? 
Wow. So something else has failed, which is causing that to short. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this with IPA and see if I can trace those tracks and see where they go to to see if I can work out what's what. I was sure it was going to be that chip. Right, let me clean it up and get back to this. Well, okay, so I've cleaned it all up and amazingly there is, although it looks really damaged, the tracks are actually okay. So we have got one that's completely lifted. If you look here, it's lifted, but it's still got continuity between here and here. So it's just come away from the board. So if I go between here and here with continuity, you can see I have got continuity still on this track. So now it's, uh, I've been having a little look and it's, uh, yeah, I can't quite get my head around it. So basically, if I take a ground from this MOSFET here, because you know this is where the initial problem was, and if I take the ground from here, then you can see now that basically it's short into both these pads on the diode that I took off, which is not correct. It's also short into, no, not that one. Okay, so it's short into that one, which is normal because it's going to here anyway. Uh, well, it might not be normal. Maybe this one here should be the ground. I don't know, but have a look. So here, can you see this capacitor is also shorting on both of them? And also this one here is also shorting. But the weird thing is, if I go to, uh, where am I now? Here, this is like where it starts, or not starts, maybe this is where it ends. So obviously it can't go more than this because it's just, just a pad on its own. So it's somewhere before here. I'm tempted to take off the capacitor, but then again, it could be this capacitor here. I'm trying to trace the tracks, but it's so hard because when you look really, really close, because there's so much white markings and stuff on it, the tracks kind of get hidden between a white marking and then it goes under a component. And with all the writing and everything, it's really, really hard, even when I'm looking through my eye loop, to actually trace where the tracks are going. So right now, I'm not too sure about where this short should be coming from. I mean, there's definitely a short on here, but I can't seem to I can't seem to work it out. So I suppose to begin with, maybe I will pop off this capacitor and this capacitor just in case the capacitors have shorted. But I think it's unlikely. Uh, and then if it's not these two, then I might need. I mean, I don't know. It could be happening all the way over here. Some of these traces go all the way over to the components over here. So I don't really know what's going on at the moment. But I think I'm going to take off this capacitor here, and I might also do this one here as well while I've got while I've got the board warm. So let me just quickly do that now. See, I'm concentrating all my efforts here, but remember, it goes further than this. It could be a component up here that's causing it, or one right the way over here that's causing it. Because if they're on the same, if that, if, if it's been shorted to ground and it's on the same rail, then it could be absolutely anywhere, couldn't it? Quickly check the pads now before I take the other one off. Right, okay, so they are shorting. I'm just going to go on the capacitor, and the capacitor's not shorting, so I might as well pop that capacitor back on. pads on this other capacitor. Right, okay, so they're also shorting. So again, that's not the capacitor. So I'm just gonna pop that one back on. Right, okay, so I need to uh, start, start looking elsewhere. It's not them two. I'm, uh, I'm really confused about why my board is burning so bad. So, uh, I mean, why, why is the board melting before the solder's melting? Don't get that. And you can see how black and charred it is, and as well it stinks. If I add 
certainly more heat to that bit of the board there. I think it's definitely going to be game over for this board. Not that it matters. This will. I, I would never ever put this in a PlayStation 4, and I would never ever sell this. I would, uh, but I could still use the board for spares for, for example, other ones in the future. You know, good ones. And remember, I haven't actually yet broken this replacement power supply. So right now, I haven't actually wasted any money. Uh, if you know why the board keeps burning here before the sol uh, solder goes off, then let me know. Yes, I understand to begin with, I should have heated up the board in a wider area and then it wouldn't have popped. But now that it has popped, is that is that why? Because there's no mass there that it's burning way before the solder. And I know people are going to say I've got my, my air on too high, but even if I had the air on at, let's say, 370 or something like that, it's still going to end up burning here before the solder, isn't it? Because remember, the solder wasn't melting here when I went to take this capacitor off. This was all blackening up before the capacitor was coming off. Right, OK, I am... I'm just going to keep looking at this through the eye loop and seeing if I can trace... You know, trace the contacts, trace the tracks around the place, the traces, and see where they uh, where they come up. So uh, give me a little while and I'll be back to this. Hopefully I might have a bit more info. OK, it's a few minutes later and I've made a tiny bit of progress. It's making a little bit more sense in my head now because, look, if we're using the ground from the MOSFETs, which is this one here, you can see that it shorts to the negative of the capacitor, which makes sense. Now look, the negative of the capacitor goes up to this top bit of the capacitor here. So I'm going to zoom in now and take you from there. OK, so I've got one lead on the negative of the capacitor, and can you see now it goes to this one here? But yet it doesn't go to this one here, so it looks like this capacitor is OK. And this, I'm presuming, negative to the capacitor, must be my ground, unless I've got things completely wrong. Now, this one here, I've moved from here now, goes to here. So this one here would have to be my ground. But now, watch, this was the capacitor I took off a minute ago. If I go to this side here, it's also shorting. And now let's go back to my ground on the MOSFET, and you see this side of the capacitor shorting. Now, I thought this one here was the end of the line, but it's not. This is linked to here. So basically, this is now ground, and it shouldn't be ground. And we know it's not this capacitor. But we know further down here it's OK, because this is not short into ground here. So if you have a listen, yeah. But look, not short into ground there. So it looks like this is like the end of the line here. And it goes to here, OK? So from here, this shouldn't be ground, but it is ground, according to this. And then if we trace that along, it goes to this capacitor here. And again, if we go here, you can see that that's grounded on both sides. This side, I presume, should always be ground, but this side shouldn't. And then from here, where does it go to then? I kind of lost it. I think... Yeah, so I need to trace it from here now, going across. But... I'm presuming that that ends up going to, uh, you know, maybe this one here, which is then, uh, yeah, I need to trace it going off. It must be going off in this direction up here. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Well, OK, this is a, a complete and utter mess now because I've been scraping it with the fiberglass pen just to try to work out where things go. Uh, I know it looks a mess, but believe it or not, these, apart from the fact that it's come off the board here, everything is still intact. So now... What I'm wondering is, if you have a look, there's also a capacitor here which is also showing the short because it travels through from here. So I think I'm going to try to take this off. Now I know I'm adding more heat to the damaged part of the board, but this, I'm just trying to eliminate component by component because any one of these could have failed. And uh, again, if you have a listen here, you can see this is shorting through it, but is it the capacitor? Or is it the pads underneath? Because everything else is shorting, you know, where it shouldn't be shorting. So I'm going to take this one off now just to see if that makes any difference. Well, it came off really easy, that one. Nope, so it's not that starting to run out of options now because as far as I can see it only goes as far as this area here and this is not short in here you see getting really confused
So many of you are shouting at the screen because you know the answer, but I don't. I thought I would have had this sorted by now. I can't see the component that's dragging it down to ground. Right, I'm going to pop that capacitor back on and keep on looking. Okay, so still struggling on with this. I really, really, really want to find out what it is. I know I probably won't even be putting 240 volts into the faulty one because it's just so burnt and stuff, but I just need to, I really want to prove what this fault was. Now, if you have a look here, do you remember that the pad here is going to this one here? Yeah. And on the faulty board, it's also short into here because of, uh, you know, connected it through various other ones to ground. But check this out. If I go down to this one here, can you see this is linked to this one here? But look, not this one. This one here, the second one along, is actually linked to this one here. Yeah, this one here. So now, if this was faulty, that would throw a short between here and here, which would then link up this ground rail here. Now if we go over to the faulty board, that's exactly what's happening. If you can have a look between this pin here and this pin here, we've got a short. So, this one here, like we said, goes to here, and this one goes to here. But yet, they're both connected together. So I'm gonna unsolder this. I wonder if this is the dodgy chip. So let's try and take this one off and see if that fixes it. Right, again, that was a horrendous one, and uh, the board popped up again. So, note to self, this power supply must be kind of prone to laminating up, which is, is fine. I'm not going to be using this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm only doing this for testing, but it's still interesting to see. In hindsight, maybe I should have added leaded solder to the contacts first to reduce the temperature down a bit to make it easier to come off because I've never had a board like this, so I haven't got a lot of experience, but still, I have kind of messed around with quite a few chips now. I've never had a board where it laminates and pops up so uh, so quick. Right, okay, now let's see if these pads are still shorting. No, they're not. So now let's go between these two. I think we might have found a problem. Right, let's bring this chip down into here. Now I need to clean it all up, but let's see if, well, let's flip it over. So where were we now? Was it this one and this one? I think that's it. Right, let me give it a good clean and so I can fully see what's going on. So I've cleaned up this chip now. This is the good board here. Let's place this right next to it and let's see if I can show you the, uh, the difference between it. Let's just make sure it's on the right way. Right, let's zoom right in. This is the chip on the good board and can you see there's a tiny little dot here and can you see the dot is here as well. So we know that it's in that orientation. Now watch this. So it was this pin here and this pin that was shorting. So let me show you on the faulty board obviously. So let me show you on this board now, these two pins do not short. Yeah, now watch this. Here. Well, I'll tell you what, look, you can see if I jam it in there and jam it in here, they don't short. And now if I jam it in here, jam it in here, can you see they're shorting? Let me see if I can get it perfect. There you go, those two pins there. 100% that chip is the faulty one. So let me take it off here now. Put it onto here. We're still in the right orientation. Okay, and that one there, and that one. Wow, okay, I am 100% certain of that. So, the fault's on this board here. So the power surge came, it definitely blew this MOSFET, it definitely blew the fuse, and it blew this chip here. So it wasn't anything to do with the diode, it wasn't anything to do with that chip, it was to do with the chip 
here. Now part of me is tempted to solder the chip back on, solder this diode back on, bodge it up with the, get the chip off this board here, bodge it up and put it on here, just to see if we have the 5 volts and 12 volts. But you know what, it's going to need a lot of work here, it's a complete mess, I'd only be doing it for the video, and I feel that that has definitely proved the fault, because we had one of the, the lines going to ground, and it's from this chip here. And now if we go on to the pads here, let's see if I've got any pads remaining. So we were, which pads were we with this one here and this one here, yeah, so the middle one's come off. If I go here and here, you can see now the short's gone, and now let me zoom in a bit more. Right, so this pad here was going up to this pad. Or was it this one? No, sorry, this one here. Uh, this one, there you go. Right, so you can see that's shorting now. And now if I go onto this pad, you can see it's coming up here. And now across that diode, check it out, the short has completely gone. 100%, there's no doubt in my mind that that is the final faulty piece of the surge problem. Oh, I'm so pleased. I know I had to spend £22.50 to work that out, but I am so, so happy. So now, if I have one of these again in the future, if anybody watching this has one of these, I'm not saying the fault's going to be exactly the same, but maybe it's quite common to have, when you have a surge on the line, this go, the fuse go, and this chip here. Maybe it's quite common for that to happen. So now, this hasn't been a waste for me because look, I haven't had to tamper with this whatsoever. I was only using this for a few measurements. All I've ruined is the board that was already ruined. So now I can use this for spares to hopefully fix other ones in future. And I know now I can throw this one away because 100% this has shorted on the inside. Now, there might well be other things gone as well, but I did quite a bit of testing on this before and the only thing I found different was the uh, diode up here. Like for example, a lot of people said, why didn't I test the capacitors? Well, I did a lot of the testing off camera and they weren't shorting to ground. The only thing I found that wasn't normal was this diode. And the reason the diode was shorting is because of this chip here. So I'm so, so, so happy that I finally got closure on that. And I know that's really sad because I haven't even got a working product at the end of it. It's just, the, the quest for knowledge. It's just when you've spent so long on something trying to work out what it is and it still uh, you know, uh, confuses you, then it's nice to get to the bottom of it. Also, sorry, I completely forgot. Bridge rectifier, completely shorted as well. So uh, it's the MOSFET, the fuse, and also the bridge rectifier and that chip. So now if you were to add up the price of all those components, it's probably just as well getting yourself a power supply for £22.50. Beforehand, I got one for £20. So if you search around, you can get them secondhand on eBay quite cheaply because I'm pretty sure none of these components are going to be expensive. But how easy would it be to get one of these chips? I really don't know. Let's just see if we can actually get any markings off this chip just out of curiosity. There you have it. That's the culprit there. 1612A3 GCHL. 1612A3 GCHL. Don't even know what that is. If you know what it is, uh, or if you know what it controls or what it does, pop it down to the comments because hopefully future people reading this might have an interest in what it is. But like I was saying, if you were to buy that, the bridge rectifier, a fuse, and the MOSFET, because the MOSFET I think did cost a couple of pounds, uh, it probably, and all the time taken, you might as well really probably just get yourself a, another power supply and then you're going to have more spares in case something goes in the future. But for me, I thoroughly enjoyed doing that and I'm so glad I revisited. So big thanks to Chris from Gadget UK. Big thanks to everybody else. You might have seen your name there. If I missed you out, I do apologize. There was a lot of comments to, to get through, but you might have seen your name flash up earlier when I did my little bit of editing of all the, the, the comments I got about the bridge rectifier. Uh, yeah, fantastic, really happy with that. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.